Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the World Health Network broadcast. My name is Ben Calderwood. Uh, I'm really happy to welcome Dr. Eric Feibelding back to the broadcast. He's here for another news update. Uh, this time we're chatting about a little bit of good news. Uh, we're we're going to have a quick discussion about the availability of updated COVID vaccines here in the United States. Uh, Dr. Eric Feigelding, once again, welcome. Uh, I'd like to check in and ask you, for people who may have recently had a COVID infection, or of course, for people who were previously boosted, how long uh, do they need to wait before they can get the updated vaccine? That's a really good question. Um... Uh, happy to be here, first of all. And I think well, because we had such a big summer wave, a lot of people got COVID, and this is re relevant. And technically, the CDC's FDA's answer is two months since your last infection or booster. Um, but I would say we should optimally, and this is where, you know, it's a gray area, um, optimally, we should wait four, five, six months before getting the shot. And the reason why is that, first of all, you already have, you know, some residual immunity from the recent infection, but also to reduce the effects of kind of like imprinting confusion. Um, you know, you, you know, when you have different circulating um, antibodies around, if you want the vaccine to dominate, uh, it's best if you wait at least four to six months after the previous infection's immunity has waned, and then you'll be more effective. And remember, this is a, probably this is the only shot for you for the rest of the year because you know CDC is not approving more than one shot a year at this point. So you have to make it last until next year when they offer a new version. So. I would, in that sense, kind of stretch it a little bit till deeper into winter. Um, that's why four, five, six months uh, optimally. But at the same time, you know, we don't know how strong this winter surge is. So I would just, in general, watch out, you know, uh, and see how bad uh, this winter surge is. And maybe you need more protection uh, this winter than say in the spring, what traditionally when COVID levels a little bit lower. Uh, so this is there's no right answer. And we know that if you wait a little bit longer, you can have greater immunity for the rest of the year. Uh, so that's the short <laughs> version of uh, what we should maybe do and consider all the factors. Constantly strategizing how to preserve the best immunity we can manage. Uh, speaking of that, uh, so there's three shots available in the United States, two mRNA shots, Pfizer and Moderna, and of course, then there was Novavax, the protein shot. I wanted to follow up about Novavax specifically. Um, obviously, there's a lot of Novavax hunters online trying to track that down. Talk a bit about any potential benefits of Novavax specifically relative to the two other available COVID vaccines. Yeah, there's a lot of like discussion of which is best. And in many ways, I always say, get whatever you can get your hands on uh, right away if you, you know, have not been boosted recently or have not gotten any COVID infection. The, the trade-off of waiting around sometimes will drag out the risk and you get infected uh, before you could get, get to it. Uh, so first of all, Novavax is a protein based while the other two are mRNA. You know, some people have some sort of reaction to mRNA. Not that many people uh, uh, anymore. But if you do, you know, Novavax is something you can consider because it's protein based. Um, the other thing is Novavax, un unlike the mRNA ones, which, you know, helps you with immunity uh, based on just teaching you about the spike protein. Novavax has more epitopes, has more like basically other parts of the virus besides just the spike protein alone. And so that could maybe give you broader immunity. That's the working uh, logic. That said, there's never been any large head to head study of Novavax versus Moderna versus Pfizer directly. So, and especially with the new booster, we don't have head to head studies of that per se. So, um, this is just a long time speculation that a lot of people have, and that's born in some of the laboratory studies. 
But again, get whichever one you can first. But if you want to hunt for Novavax vaccine, the vaccines.gov website doesn't provide that anymore. You have to go to novavaxcovidvaccine.com. I think it's us.novavaxcovidvaccine.com. And it'll have like this little zip code uh, address search engine for uh, pharmacies near you that carry the Novavax vaccine. But I think it's a personal preference. Um, you know, I've only gotten Novavax once. Um, most other times I just got whatever was, you know, available. And I don't feel any uh, less protected uh, per se because of it. Uh, you mentioned, of course, that any protection is better than no protection. Any vaccine is better than no vaccine. You, you know, you, re you referred to that sustained summer surge we've been experiencing and, you know, the likelihood that that's going to continue into winter. Uh, I did want to mention for our audience that the government is offering another round of free COVID tests coming up very soon. Um, comments on the value of that and where people can go uh, to request additional free COVID tests. Yeah, the free COVID tests are offered by the U.S. government. I think the what URL is covidtest.gov. Um, uh, we mentioned, uh, I think I mentioned it like a month ago, they're coming out end of September, so any day now. Um, it can order four tests per household address. So they don't know who, how many, how many people live at your household, um, but it's per post office address, or whatever is registered, you know, as a home or apartment. Um, and I think try to get it as soon as you can. That said, COVID tests are also getting cheaper. Now I think the COVID tests are being sold for $5. It's not like the $2, $1 kind of prices you see in Europe, but um, you can get it for $5 at various um, online outlets, especially if you buy them in bulk. So they're not like prohibitively expensive like they used to be, but free is free and a lot of, you know, free will get adoption. And I think you have to, whenever there's any COVID surge, or get any infection, you have to test multiple times to a make sure that you know you're negative um, and uh, safe to go out. So, I think that's the lesson here, where you know we it's it's part of the toolbox, but you have to use it. Uh, in in addition, just like when we talk about oh vaccines, well, getting the vaccines into arms is more critical part of the process than just you know announcing that they're available, right? Announcing that they're available has generally been the U.S. government strategy of, oh, we have them, but only we have adoption of like 15%, 20% in uh, in some areas and less than 10% in other areas. I think getting, getting them to arms and getting the COVID tests into people's homes to use them is the critical part of the step of everything. And Paxlovid, obviously, it's no longer covered by um, in uh, the federal government, you have to go through insurance, and some people pay a lot more than they should, given that um, the price of this drug used to be much, much, you know, the actual subsidized price of this drug is much cheaper than what many uh, people are charging uh, uh, at pharmacies. Could not agree more about Paxlovid and in general about the fact that the tools only work if people have access to them and they use them. Uh, you have Dr. to use them. <laughs> Dr. Eric Feigelding, I want to thank you once again for joining us on the broadcast with some advice about staying healthy through the winter. Uh, tests, vaccines, Paxlovid, if you need it and you can get it. Uh, a little bit about the World Health Network. Of course, we are a global organization dedicated to ending the COVID pandemic as an ongoing health threat. If you'd like to learn more about us, you can visit us online at whn.global. Uh, we hope you'll visit the website and consider participating. Thanks so much, and we'll see you again in the next broadcast. Bye-bye.